coming off a, a pretty good week where, you know, going back and watching the film, it, we're, uh, uh, I think we're trending in the right direction in a few things. I think we're getting a lot cleaner in our serve and pass game. I think, uh, uh, you know, the, the distance where we've traveled in, in, in serving, you think that, I think at first match we might have had 17 service errors. We had quite a few where we were double digits uh, with, with our errors. And then, you know, where the past few matches, I feel like that's been a, a real strength of ours is, is getting people out of system and being able to set up our defense. I, I don't I don't think – I there's definitely a, a correlation to how we're doing defending uh, recently uh, along with how we're serving. And uh, and then we're just being a lot cleaner with with our passing game, not giving away as as many automatic points, and it's it's been pretty tough. You've had to execute some really good serves to to ace us. Um, heading into this week, you know we've got a stretch here. We'll be on the road uh, quite a bit the next couple of weeks, and and going into some some tough environments. Maryland uh, over the years has been a completely different team at home than they've been on on the road, and it's uh, that can be a really tough tough and loud place to play. And then Penn State uh, the next night is you know I think they just said a had the highest attendance that they've had in probably about twenty years the other night there and that's always a tough place to play so uh excited what we've got in front of us uh, kelly with this is i think this is going to be the first time at least in conference play that you you've had matches on back-to-back -back nights mm -hmm. um I, I don't know if that adds any additional challenge uh you you, you tell me i mean what's kind of the yeah. you know I guess that's my question. Does it add any, any additional challenge? Yeah, both of these trips, you know, so this week we've got a, a you know, we go to the East Coast and, and uh, you know, we'll leave early Thursday and, um, you know, get a practice in at Maryland Thursday night. And uh, we play Friday and then you're, you're driving to, to the airport and taking a, a quick flight. So you're getting in pretty late to uh, – Friday night to, to Penn State getting up in, in, in the morning, getting a serving pass in in the morning, and, uh, and then playing that night. So, uh, you know, th things, are, things are moving, you know, when you're, when you're playing on back-to-back -back nights in two different states. I mean, you know, there, there's, you know, there's not a lot of college teams that are, that are doing that. But, it, uh, you know, that's something that we used to do as a sport all the time. We're doing a little bit less of that. Uh, and then the following week, you know, you you have Friday, Sunday, so you, you're gone from Thursday to Sunday. We haven't done much of that either. Uh, so we'll be away from our, you know, uh, uh, our uh, here and campus and and in our rooms. But but a time sometimes you get a little bit better sleep on the road. I mean, sometimes that that happens. But it's a little bit different logistically than what we've had so far. That's uh, that's for sure. The other night in Illinois, you had a, that 17 to two block differential. Over the course of the season, you have twice as many blocks as your mm -hmm. opponents. Even bigger gap yeah. in Big Ten matches. Yeah, that seems significant. What, yeah. what does that kind of differential um, mean for your team? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pride in, in, in blocking. You, you know, as many blocks as as we had. You know, there. You look at there's. Illinois was covering a lot of a lot of balls as well, and some balls that just missed going out of bounds, where that number could have been a lot higher. You know, our team takes a lot of pride in it. They work on it. They they spend a lot of time watching film. Gary spends a lot of time uh, talking with them about it during during practice. They 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 follow the game plan, but they also are able to evolve. You know, that was one of the things we saw with Illinois. Is about midway through the second set, they started setting their left pin a lot quicker. Actually, it was uh, earlier than that. And we, we, there was a period of time we, we weren't getting blocks, and part of it was uh, they were going quicker with their sets. And, and, uh, and so we were having to make an adjustment, and once we were, we were, we were, uh, we were getting our hands on it more and more positive blocks, and that led to more stuff blocks. And 
but uh, it starts with a mentality, you, you know, uh, as as most things do out on on the court or the field. It's uh, it, it begins with a mentality. Our, our players um, uh, they get irritated if they've if if they get negative block touches. I think that's you know we're getting a lot of blocks, but we're getting a lot of a lot more positive <clears throat> block touches, not nearly as many negative block touches, and, and that'll be a thing. I mean, we've got we've got Maryland and, and Penn State. I think those are two of the top three blocking teams in the league as well. And, um, you know, that that can get in your head uh, if if you're being blocked that many times. And uh, we'll be seeing two two great blocking teams in, in front of us. Um, a follow-up to the whole Friday-Saturday uh, match thing. Um, and I asked this question thinking about basketball, where I don't think, like, in the Big Ten you would see men's or women's basketball have – back-to-back games on back-to-back nights. So I guess my question to you is, is I don't know, is it, is it fair? Is it something that mm-hmm. coaches, you know, talk about and say, hey, maybe this is something that needs to be tweaked as far as, you know, uh, scheduling? Yeah, now you're going to, the, the, you know, the history of our sport where it used to be, uh, this used to be tournaments, kind of like a club tournament. That, that's how a college volleyball used to – you go back and you look at the win-loss records and there would be teams that, that would be playing over 50 matches a, a year. They'd go to these tournaments and, and play, you know, a whole bunch of, of teams at, at one place, play quite a few matches in a day. And thank goodness we've gotten away from that as a sport. We still have some teams that choose to play multiple matches in a day uh, in, in non-conference. We've, we've been totally away from that for a long time now here. Um, you know, and then it was back, to, and then it kind of evolved from those tournaments to all right, uh, let's play on back-to-back days. Um, and now you've got a little bit more separation, primarily because you get, you're on TV a lot more, and and uh, there's becoming you know a lot bigger fan bases, and so a lot of schools aren't going to be able to. They're not hosting during football games. You know, when nobody goes to your events, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to worry about crowd control but now you, you're getting a lot more people there so there's been multiple reasons why we've gotten off that Friday Saturday kind of format um, you know it's uh, you know there's pros and cons to both uh, primarily during uh, uh, during this time of year I'd rather have some separation so you can really spend some time locking in on your next opponent um, earlier in the year it's it's probably a little better to maybe have them the matches close together so you can get some quality practice time. Uh, late in the year, you'd like to have a little bit of separation so you can kind of spend a lot of time on on film and doing some things in, in the gym. Uh, this year's schedule is actually the exact opposite for us. We, we, uh, we're we having more practice time at the end and playing a lot more back-to-back days. Um, I would say given the choice, I'd, I'd rather have probably a little bit of separation between the matches. Kelly, when you uh, look ahead to this four-game road stretch, obviously coming at the end of the season, I mean, you guys haven't had a road stretch this long since the beginning. So when you talk about the logistical challenges and that kind of thing, I mean, do do you almost look forward to how it may test this team and what you may, you know, learn about them late in the season, especially knowing that on the horizon is a big Nebraska match and then obviously the postseason after that? Yeah. I mean, it's a constant challenge. There, there's, there's, there's always challenges, and you know, it's up to us as coaches to to point what that is and to prepare your team for that uh, on the road. It's, it's not just uh, the traveling and and the flights and you know, uh, you know, recovery and and things like that, but it's also academics and and preparing your your time wisely and. You know, obviously going into other environments and, and gyms and with the crowds and having to manage that, it's, uh, you know, every week it's a challenge. The challenge is different. You know, you also throw on the the blocks, the, the blocking teams that we'll have in front of us. Um, but, yeah, the, being gone this long, uh, the, they need to manage their time. They need to talk to their professors. They, they can't let their grades slip, all, all those things. And so um, – yeah, welcome to welcome to the good life. Just to follow up on that, when I, I know this late in the season, this team has been around each other a lot. But yeah. when you talk about you know going on these long road stretches, and you mentioned doing the first Thursday to Sunday, yeah, um, you know on the back half, 
does it help too? I mean, you know, give them a little bit more time around each other, a little bit more familiarity with each other. Is that something that comes into play even if it is this late in the season? Yeah, they may be getting tired of each other by now, to tell you the truth. It's <laughs> season's been long and you know, we had that big old Europe trip and I think they know each other well enough and plus a lot of them room with each other. Now, the um uh it, it's it, this time of year, you better hope that you have a team that gets along with each other. And uh, because, you know, if you're in this long enough, we've all had teams where during this time of year, they start getting a little chippy at each other and they're just, they're, they're tired and they're marking the days off from the calendar. And it's, you know, you have one person that goes up and they say, hey, hey how's your day doing? And the, the response is, don't talk to me. You know, you, you know you have problems if you have one of those teams. Uh, this team enjoys being around each other, from what I can tell. It's, uh, um, you know, they they room with each other. Certainly, probably winning helps a little bit, um, but uh, the chemistry is, is is good, and and they have a lot of fun. They have a lot of fun together. The road trips, I think, they have a they have a blast together. But uh, it certainly, as a coach, you always have your antennas up of of how are we doing? Do we need to put people in their separate corners and corners and uh, uh, that doesn't seem to be the case with this group so far. On the scheduling theme, mm -hmm. um, you get a quirk that you're playing Penn State really deep into the season for the first time, only time. And looking ahead, big picture, that's going to happen a lot more, it would seem, with the four West Coast teams coming in. I know football announced it's – schedule for next year came out last week have you have there been discussions or input from coaches on your things from the conference how that will play out in the future with four teams uh, on the west coast and how that all will work into scheduling yeah we've had almost uh you're right i mean it's it's kind of a shame that we're playing penn state once i mean we've had some great matches you know you think back last year i think both of the two of the matches went Five, um, and uh, had had some great battles, and uh, to think that there's going to be less ma less times that we're that we're playing them, uh, uh, you know, there's pros and cons. That would certainly be one of the con, um, you, you know. But uh, the only thing that we've we haven't gotten into deep conversations. I know we're still there's it's going to be 20 matches. Um, you know, I don't think there's right now a lot of discussion about having a tournament. I think uh, uh, 20 matches, you try to get the, the schedule as balanced as, as possible um, with those teams that you're playing twice. Uh, what that looks like, I'm not sure. I'm sure there'll probably be a little bit of a travel component uh, around. Um, but, yeah, some of these longtime rivalries where you've had some, some epic matches home and home, there's going to be a lot less than that. It's a, uh, uh, it's, it's a lot more. Uh, there's going to be a lot more, yeah, you play a team once, and then we'll see you next year.